Good day everyone, my name is Dominic. I work with Oracle JDBC related products here at Oracle. This quick video provides an overview of the Oracle JDBC API logging and the Oracle JDBC packet tracing features, as well as how to enable them. We will also discuss loggers, log rotation and logging levels, followed by a quick demo. Oracle JDBC driver provides two types of logging. One is Oracle JDBC driver API logging, that, is, that shows more details specific to the driver level API calls. And the packet trace is another uh, logging which shows the communication between the driver and the Oracle database. This packet tracing is closely looks like a SQL net trace. There are two ways to enable the logging. One is using the system properties or through the API calls, that is setting the properties programmatically. To enable Oracle JDBC driver logging, we need to use Oracle JDBC driver file that ends with underscore g.jar file. Without this file, the log contents cannot be generated because this file has the diagnosability feature. While choosing the jar file, we need to choose the right jar file that's compatible for your JDK version and your Oracle database version. That's step number one. In step number two, we need to enable the logging switch and it can be done by either using the iPhone D Java option that mentioned here, or by calling the logging switch from the application code. In step number three, we should pass the logging properties file using the iPhone D option that is mentioned here. And the logging properties file should have the uh, handler, logger, logging level, and other details. Oracle JDBC driver provides different loggers and logging levels to control the log generation. Here you can see different loggers, starting from oracle.jdbc and oracle JDBC AQ and so on. For example, if you are only interested in getting the SQL that is passed through the JDBC driver, you may use the oracle.sql logger and you can set the logging level for that. If you use oracle.jdbc logger, then it is for almost all the Oracle messages can be passed through that logger so you can route them to the corresponding handlers, either the file handler or console handler. Oracle JDBC driver supports different logging levels, starting from off to all. With the logging level severe, the log volume is low, but with the logging level fineness, expected log volume is high. You can specify different logging levels for different loggers. And if you do not want to receive any log contents, you may switch it off using the off uh, logging level. Here is a code snippet that shows how to enable and disable the logging through JDBC API calls. The following Java Util properties file uses file handler. Here, by setting Oracle JDBC level is equal to finest, we can collect all the logs from the driver. In addition, you can see log rotation is enabled, which each file limit of 50 MB and maximum of 10 files. Once it is reached, it will overwrite the old contents because we specified append is equal to true. You may use XML formatter or simple formatter, and you can specify the, the file name and which directory it needs to be generated. This is how the simple format log content looks like. When you use a XML formatter, this is how the log file looks like. To enable the packet trace, we need to follow the three steps that we discussed earlier. One is using OJDBC underscore g.jar file. That's number one step. Number two is enable the logging switch by system property R through API calls. And step three is need to pass logging properties either by system property or through API calls. To enable Oracle JDBC packet trace, Oracle net NS level should be all or finest. Here we have provided a custom handler called demultiplexing handler for packet tracing and this should not be used with uh, Java API level logging. This is how the JDBC packet trace looks like.
We will use this code in the demo, which makes a connection to the database, executes a simple query, and displays the results. Okay, we are going to run a demo code here. You could see the existing class path points to Oracle JDBC driver underscore g dot jar and no other JDBC driver pointed in the class path. You can include other jar files, but only it should be pointing to Oracle JDBC driver underscore g dot to enable the logging. I'm going to compile and I'm going to run it. While running, I'm passing two FND options. One is for the prolog properties, and the other one is for to enable the logging. On the right side, you should be able to see the a new log file is created of 37 MB file size. Here's the resource page. Thank you for watching.